We're going to cover the topic of Patreon. A way for creators to make money from their creations. This is focused more on um, that you create things that people want to pay you for. Uh, so, patreon.com is a free to set up system where you create content, set tiered rewards, and interact. So let's say I enjoy creating these YouTube videos. Let's say I write I like writing blogs. Let's say I create tutorials. Let's say um, I have things. I have content that I create that I think I could make money off of. You don't. You can't make money that easily. Sometimes off of YouTube, I don't have an audience, or maybe blogging. No one's reading my articles. Well, you incentivize people to pay for your creations, and one way is Patreon. We can check out the website here. Go to patreon.com. Let's see. Patreon allows writers, visual artists like you to get paid by running a membership business for your fans. So it's a way for you to set up a system for people to buy a membership with a variety of tiers that you define and prices that you define with uh, rewards or results that you define. Uh, so there's a lot of self-promotion, how it works. There's analytics, member services. So for example, this account here, kind of funny. They create videos and podcasts. They've got 6,000 people as patrons, meaning they pay some amount of money to kind of subscribe to what they're creating. Uh, some accounts will tell you, obviously, how much it is, and some will just tell you, here's how many members. But I think the minimum amount that you have to request is $1. So even just saying they've got 6,000 members, that means they're getting about $6,000 per month um, from their subscribers. Most likely there are different levels. Maybe for $1 you get access to two videos a month. For $2 you get access to five videos a month. For you know $5 a month, $10 a month, you get X. So however you define it. Question? Either or. It could be that what you create is public and then you set up a sort of like a donation system that you get paid, or you could set it up that it's exclusive, that you have to be a patron and subscribed for you to see the material. So, so the only place that you would see it is through Patreon. No, it could be that they would see it from YouTube. You get, you know how you have on YouTube public, private, and unlisted? You cannot get to unlisted unless you have the link. So they could subscribe to you on Patreon, and at Patreon you get the exclusive unlisted link to go watch it on YouTube. Or keep it simple and upload your videos directly to Patreon and keep it a little bit more like, you know, controlled on Patreon. But your viewers basically start out on Patreon. Your, your, customers. your customers, yes. Yeah. I'm going to just take a look how they've got it, this kind of funny account. So they've got an account, patreon.com slash kind of funny. Kind of funny is creating internet videos and podcasts. They have 6,000 patrons who knows how much they're paying at the minimum $1. And their overview. Okay, there's a little video about what they're all about. 
Thank you for at least thinking about subscribing to us. You've come so far to check us out. They talk about what it's about, a little preview, whatever, and then um, subscribe, become a patron. You'll get it. You'll get uh, immediate access to as many as 667 patron-only exclusives like this one right here. Um, to get access to this, How to Talk Trash, the Game Over Greggy Show, episode 246. If you wanted to watch or listen to that episode, you have to get into the tier of the $10 range, which gives you access to a certain tier of content, I suppose. Over here, it's for $5, another tier of something else. Let's see what it says over here. Here's the tiers. The $1 per month. Early access to shows, exclusive access to the comic book club, and they explain more what you get for a dollar a month. At two dollars, you get that plus this. You get in their raffle, their exclusive raffle. For five dollars, you get that. Uh, and then higher. Let's see what's the highest one they have here. Hmm, for ten thousand dollars per month we will give your brand or product or whatever you want a month of shout outs so this this one is one of the bigger names on patreon so yeah they are there are gonna be companies out there okay I'm Starbucks I do want to do some promotion on your account yeah we will do 10,000 per month that's a steal for us at Starbucks and then uh, for us regular people, obviously, that's... Uh, for for 6,000 followers. For, for 6,000 sets of eyeballs. Um, at so least. 6, at, at, at minimum, because uh, they probably also have synergy by being on Twitter and Facebook. So it's at least 6,000 that are looking on Patreon, but I'm sure they're also on the other networks, and they're probably shouting out on the other networks as well. So it is a kind of a multi, um, multi-level um, marketing strategy. Let's see another example. Um, I don't know. Let's say cover, cover songs. Is anyone doing cover songs? Okay. So selfie over here. Revealing that they have eighty-seven patrons, and out of those eighty-seven, they're getting sixteen hundred dollars, seventeen hundred dollars per month out of their cover songs and live streams. So Selfie is creating cover songs and live streams uh, in German, I guess. So they um, say who they are and what they do. OK, so examples of content under posts. So again, these are set as, in order for you to get access to this, uh, $25 per month, $2 to get access to this. I guess that says the latest poster design, maybe. Uh, $2 gets you that, etc. Okay, so Cat draws shenanigans. They have one patron, and so far they're paying them $14 per month. Wow. Daily Cat drawings. 12 patrons are paying them $26 a month. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, these little bits of, of money adds up. $26 per month, that's three hundred over $300 per month, uh, per year. Yeah, three hundred dollars a year it, when you have a real job is nothing, but if you have this on the side or on top of other things, and maybe you do get popular, you do go viral, and then this does this does add up. Exactly, it's for a couple cat drawings. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I guess let's see. Explore. What else can it show? So if I'm interested in these topics here, let's see education. Let's see what people are doing regarding education. 
creating animated math videos. And they have, yeah, people are really bad at math. So here we have almost 5,000 people subscribed to three blue, one brown. Let's see. They're not revealing how much they're getting. But again, at the minimum, one dollar. Now they're doing it per video. You pay one dollar to catch a video here. Two dollars for these extra things. Some are like at a monthly subscription. Some are per creation. And the creations here can be video, audio, text, blogs, um, animation, etc. So let's see examples. So on July 30th, this one was uploaded. Let's say I wanted to unlock it. I go here. This one tells me in detail, well, it's going to be a dollar. I have a dollar laying around. I, I, want, I want that video. Um, further over here. OK, I want my name to appear in the credits of this creator. That's $31. I want a phone call. I'll give you a personal phone call where we can chat about math, outreach, and the future of each. As always, this is on top of previous record, uh, previous rewards. <clears throat> so you get everything above that, plus a one-on-one -on -one phone call. No mention of it being five minutes or an hour or whatever, but uh, I'm sure it's substantial. The next one, you get twice as much gratitude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quantifiably. That's worth $40, huh? Mm -hmm. And... Um, Rancho Relaxo is creating a safer world for animals to live in. Electro Boom is creating funniest educational videos in the universe and beyond. Rob Swift is creating world-class guitar lessons. So, taking into account what everything else we've talked about, about creating content, um, the here then they've got their, their, they of course have their Twitter account linked and their Facebook account linked and all of that you're, you're not going to make money on most of these networks except YouTube and something like Patreon where it focuses on you create stuff and it comes from the word patron you're going to have patrons that patronize you patronize you to um, tip you to buy your content on a monthly basis, on an individual basis. And there's other ones out there. This is the famous one at the moment. And yes, the Patreon company does take somewhat of a commission. I don't know what the rates are at the moment. It's going to be listed in here somewhere. But they do take, let's say someone is giving you a dollar per month, you get like 80, 80 cents out of it. They need to take a little bit out of it to get the system running, just like every other online endeavor. There's going to be a video there. Let's see, maybe over here somewhere, frequently asked questions. So would you create a video like, like you did for YouTube? Um, through the, I forget the editing program that you Premiere, Adobe yeah. Premiere. And then you upload up. Same thing, but upload on Patreon. Yes, so let me, let me put some, some idea examples here. So, uh, create content videos, for example. Create a free version you upload to YouTube for all to see. Add in the free version some promotion saying, Get the full version, get the better version, get the longer version okay. over on our Patreon. Saying get the full version at our Patreon. At my, at our Patreon. And then a link to your, your Patreon account, patreon.com, Victor. So then create a patron exclusive a Patreon exclusive version only accessible once 
a patron subscribes once they pay you. Create tiers. So cheapskates, I mean those on a budget, can get the dollar one, which is the minimum. And then uh, with more effort, you create the other ones. But create tiers so that you can have different revenue streams. This is kind of optional. You could have one fixed price about all oh, my stuff will be five dollars a month. You get it, you get it all five dollars a month, whatever. Uh, or you, we've seen several examples of this is going to cost you X amount of dollars per video. This is going to cost you X amount of dollars for different levels of service. You get five videos a month for one dollar. You get ten videos for five dollars. Whatever. You have a lot of control about how you uh, set up your tiers. And then. Um, not not a lot you can go the minimum could be that you know once a month I'm gonna create a video and it's gonna be five dollars that's it so every month you know you're gonna get a brand new video for five dollars or two dollars or twenty dollars whatever those that really uh, create a lot of content and specialize and put tiers and rewards they they that, that's their full-time job and that's when they've got four thousand that's when they've got 4,000 patrons and they're making you know six thousand dollars a month but those of us perhaps a little bit more on the side starting off on the on these simpler tiers that that'll be that'll work as well and then as you incorporate promotion on Twitter and promotion on YouTube and Facebook and all of that hopefully then you bring more traffic to entice people to subscribe Here we go, fees. Our mission, okay, whatever. That's why we have a fee of 5% and why we do everything we can do to minimize transaction fees. So there are three different fees. The Patreon fee takes $5 or 5% on successfully processed payments. The processing fee, the cost of moving funds, which is how much? It tells you there's a fee for that, but it doesn't say how much. And then payout fee, the charge for moving funds from your account over to PayPal or whatever. So if you if you direct deposit to your bank account, okay, that's five percent plus the twenty five cent fee on that. Or if you move it over to PayPal, twenty five cents plus one percent of that. You use Payoneer for international. That's going to vary. So there's always a middleman, especially when it comes to money. And um, Patreon does seem to listen to. Uh, the creators because they've been around at least five years I think and on internet time that's that's a while because websites come and go but they had a, a certain fee structure for several years and earlier this year they were gonna start to change their fee structure and people freaked out and said we don't like that and it's gonna really hurt us and all of that and they said okay sorry then we won't do it now that doesn't mean they won't do it later but they did listen to the community and reversed what their plan was going to be and the creators are happy and obviously patreon needs creators to create content on their platform so that they get the fees and that you get subscribers and you get your payments So what else can we see from the home page here? It's pretty straightforward. Create an account. It'll ask you to set up a variety of things, and then you start to create your content. You know, a lot of these where you sign up, it says sign in with Facebook. Mm -hmm. Is that is there a downside to that? I mean, is there some kind of a you created some kind of a link from there to Facebook? Or? Yes, the downside is the downside is that you are giving Facebook more data and traffic about what you're doing online, okay. uh, which you know, in the aspect of that, it it knows. Okay, you've logged into these seven sites about technology. Let's show you technology stuff on Facebook. 
uh, to the more insidious aspects of all of the social media that we live in at the moment. Uh, but it is the convenience. Now, the way that works is you click on that, then it takes you over to Facebook temporarily. You sign into Facebook. Facebook vouches your identity and sends you back to Patreon. So Patreon never gets your Facebook email uh, or password. It's that Facebook vouches for you and sends you back to Patreon. You have to anyway, in most of these sites, still add some sort of email and confirm. So I just, I almost never log in with any third party thing. I just go directly to the account and set myself up there so that they're not kind of tangled up. So basically, it's just collecting data on, your, on where you've been. Yeah, it's try. Not making some sort of link between That I mean, does, that, in this case, I don't think so, but it depends on. When you click sign up, it will pop up to say, Facebook would like to have access to this, this, or that. And that depends on how the connection is set up. So I cannot guarantee that there will always not be a connection. You want to read that box. But I personally, I never do that because it's just extra connection. Okay. Yes? If Facebook, you would have to clear the hackers here if you want to get access to your no, this system is supposed to be set up that it is sort of like um, what's a real world analogy, like a like a blind taste test, in that you don't know who's administering it and that sort of thing. It's just that if Facebook is hacked, Facebook is not storing your password over to Patreon. It is creating a session ID at that moment. That at this moment, you want to log into Patreon, and in some amount of time, hours or days or months. It forgot it forgets that so there is a window of time perhaps that if someone gets into your Facebook it might be able to get into your patreon within the time limits and I don't know it's it's another reason um, it is convenient but a lot of what we have nowadays is convenience versus security and unfortunately most people want convenience which is not secure it's inconvenient to set up two different logins but it's more secure Yeah, it goes back to convenience versus security. Yeah. Uh, people on their own laptops, you know, you're logged into your email, you're logged into your bank, you just go to the bank and you're already there. But then when you go off to some other computer, someone else's computer, and like, I don't know how to log in, I don't have my password, because you're not auto-logged in. And it's just convenience versus security. So I know people are going to ask, and yes, you can contribute to my Patreon account here if you'd like. Uh, Patreon.com if you're interested about in comic books and Magic the Gathering and all that fun stuff. For as little as a dollar a month, you can get access to that. And there's five people at least that are interested, so I'm happy. And this is practicing what, what I teach in the class, right? I, I'm always talking about what I show in these classes I, I have the experience in. So here, you know, I fill this out and I do a little bit of a video about what can you get about being a member and uh, what's it about and following the best practices of what the company about Patreon recommends that you do yourself. And then there's posts and obviously if you, what's the expression, why buy the cow if you get the milk for free? Well, if you're going to give everything away always for free on Twitter or YouTube or whatever, then 
there's a huge segment of the population that's that will say like a dollar I get it for free you know it, you this is when you really see how many cheapskates there are out there because <laughs> even at a dollar people like well I'm just gonna get it for free I'll, I'll pay it later I'll pay you I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today so here's examples where okay here's something right here patrons only if you want to see this uh oh you got to pay a dollar and there's plenty of people that will say oh, I, I, I don't want to give you a dollar uh, and then there's the free stuff there yeah okay no problem go watch, go listen to this episode of this podcast right here just press play and there it is but if you wanted this uh, okay let me unlock it here's the various tiers you can be a dollar or two dollars three dollars five dollars whatever and then uh, you can get one month with one dollar you have access to everything so that one month you can go off and read and watch everything that you have here then cancel and then okay you spent the dollar this month but uh, for most people once you st they realize that you do get good material uh, hopefully they then go for those tiers and what's cool is you can you don't exactly have playlists but you have tags so all of the all of the playlists of YouTube would sort of be related to tags. I want to go um, look at the retro playlist, so that will show you the uh, all of the posts regarding that topic right there. So there, uh, last year at Comic Con, I bought a Tom and Jerry comic book from 1957. Mm -hmm. So that was cool. And I only got it for two dollars, and so it had a really cool ad of Seven uh, Up. Uh, from 1957, it had some fun stories uh, from Tom and Jerry. They actually talked. You know, they never talk in the in the cartoons. And so that's that's sort of that's that's connected back to YouTube. This is coming off of YouTube being shown here on on Patreon. So last semester when I taught this, someone said, "Oh, a Patreon is sort of like a consolidation." Hello, everyone. It's VM Campos. Yeah, because it's you hard to believe, but a month ago. Was YouTube San Diego and Twitter, Comic Con and whatever, and 2017? You can have it all consolidated. It feels in like one so long ago, and yet it was only That's a month ago. For people to subscribe because Comic Con is still then, about the um, comics for me, at least. They will get all a few the material in one It's going to be what two ninety five end up. So Brandy, that, look so at Red. And mm -hmm. so it's basically the story if it of wasn't Red Riding Hood. Video, it would be. What's gonna, it would be there with. Um, right here see this one um, so uh, back when toy back when Toys R Us was closing down so I did a version of this audio episode about Toys R Us for free eight minutes and there's a 20 minute long version and that's the one for paid so that's giving like the uh, the, the, the and are, preview and, and those video th that video is on YouTube or not on YouTube the one up here of Tom and Jerry, that one's on YouTube, but then this, these two about Toys R Us, these are only on Patreon. Okay, but even but the free they, one. Could they be on YouTube with the restricted? Um... Unlisted, yes. So you'd put the unlisted link into yeah. the paid box or whatever it is, and yeah. they would click it, and it would take you to the unlisted on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I don't you had said, yeah, they, you said before with YouTube, you should put everything on YouTube because they've got unlimited whatever highest security and, and everything. So would it make more sense to have all, your, all of the videos through Patreon as unlisted with a link to them from Patreon? Well, that doesn't have anything to do, anything to do with security. That just has to do with you getting paid. So. That's what I mean. So you make them unlisted videos on YouTube. And the link would come from Patreon. In in that case, you just might be better off uploading them directly to Patreon. If they're all going to be on YouTube and they're all going to be unlisted, you might as well just have your videos directly on Patreon without having two sites to worry about. Because okay. on Patreon, that's where they can also be unlisted and for pay. Okay. Now, one reason to have them on YouTube unlisted and also then on Patreon, maybe one day you decide, okay, this one is a year old, no one's actually watching it anymore, let me make it public, give it out there now for free, and then maybe that will help me get traffic over to the paid ones. Question? Um, they show you how many people have watched the video too? Yeah, uh, Patreon and YouTube and most of these networks will give you all of this, these stats about what's popular and... Uh, all of those stats will help me then create future 
content and and uh, ideas. Yeah. Then this thing? Yeah. No, I think that's the generic Patreon um, teaser. Um, but that's a good point. I, I hadn't thought about that. What would you think would be better than, than this thing here? Maybe some sort of like... Yeah, maybe that's something that they could add, or maybe that might be good to kind of go in, into their feedback system and tell them, hey, we would like to be able to, for us to create our own preview icon. It seems that they just kind of do this generic thing for everyone. Yeah. That's true. Well, but, I mean, aren't you offering... Curiosity. You do offer a little something. Yeah, I know, but if you're kind of bent in the breath and, you know, the guy's page, you can see it. If you see this, if you see this out of context on its own, yeah, it doesn't seem that enticing. Although it is right next to, in theory, it is right next to the one about the free one. Yes. So maybe like this one over here. Let's see. Can I show the example on the latest one right here? So yeah, it's very generic. This one kind of shows a little text, I guess. Uh, for patrons only and then it's up it, we have the ability to do this part here to say what are you about to look at but again the picture's worth a thousand words and then you get a little preview about you're gonna get the full deck list and commentary okay continue reading well then now it says sign up so it should give you some sort of better way to have a little a little picture picture preview So here's all of these. Yeah, they're, all of these are the exclusive ones, and they all look generically just like something. It vaguely blur it vaguely takes the original graphic and blurs it somehow, but it's so abstract that you don't see any difference at all. It is based on what you wrote here. And they recently added, see, all of these kind of just say like this, okay, patron exclusive man number one, well, what else? They recently added for you to be able to add a little bit more of a teaser about what you will be there, but I think a picture would be better. So this is something I've started to talk about in the in the previous in the recent semesters, and people seem to really uh, get curious about this. And again, it's free to set up. The cost of it is in the fees once you start to make some money. But um, this is another way to uh, monetize your online presence. That I, that I recommend. I'm still um, trying to learn on it more and if, if any measure of success is you know the amount of patrons and all of that then there's still a lot more to learn. But uh, any questions on, uh, on Patreon? Yeah. Patreon validates any of the content that people put on Patreon. For example, if somebody who I'm interested in following their content, how do I know it's actually been something I don't believe they do validation in terms of like, okay, kind of funny, they're a big name, but looking at their account, I don't believe there's any indicator that that's the official one. What I would do is uh, kind of confirm based on, that is the YouTube that I expect, that is the, the Facebook that I expect, but there's no check mark saying this is the official one. I would also go with, well, they seem to be representing themselves as the famous one, but they've only got 12 patrons. So again, the numbers of how many patrons they have, that also is some indicator that they're the official one. Yeah, you would be able to. I would not be able to. I can't use the same name. You, you cannot use the same address. Patreon.com slash kinda funny is taken, but I might be able to do patreon.com slash kinda dash funny. And then all of this you can make it anything you want. It's just that the web address is the reserved one. So there is a way to do misrepresentation. Uh, and there aren't like uh, verified accounts at the moment. I'm sure that's another thing that they'll add at some point. Because if you go over to Twitter and such, they're verified there, but Patreon doesn't have a verification system yet. Is there anybody else doing something similar? 
but not as popular when you know there was originally was a MySpace and then there was a Facebook. So just very quick search here. The best Patreon alternatives. So some result appeared here. Let's see who else is around here. Kickstarter, okay, they've been around a while. Indiegogo, they've been around. Donation, Podia, Memberful. Oh, here's one that I've been hearing coming soon, Drip. So yeah, Kickstarter is, is something that's been around in Indiegogo too. What's that? They're two different companies, but they're the same idea. I think I think they're stretching it. Donations. Yeah, I think this review is stretching it a little bit. I wouldn't quite think of Kickstarter or Indiegogo as Patreon competitors. I think it's stretching it a little bit. The closest one from just a quick look here. And even like these donation buttons, well, those have been around since people begging for money for, from that for a while. I had one back in like 2001 on my website and no one paid me anything. Uh, the closest one I would say is this one that's coming soon, Drip. That one I have been hearing that it's more of a Patreon-like thing uh, and it's coming from Kickstarter. So there it is, that Kickstarter is not really Patreon, Drip is going to be like Patreon. Now... Um, one that I have heard of that I don't want to mention is an alternative alt-right white supremacist one that I've heard about that because so many of those groups have been kicked out of legitimate places like Twitter and YouTube and such, they're trying to create their own sort of system like that, which is failing. So I don't want to give them any free, any free press, but there is a version like that for, for them. But uh, Patreon is the big famous one, and um, it's just another way for you to maybe monetize your content. As we wind down, any final questions on Patreon? Don't forget to click on that button right there before you leave today. <laughs> so you said the prices then just apply to what you're offering for that price. Yeah. Yeah, so... Some people are very detailed, you saw in some of these examples, like kind of funny, we'll give you a shout out and you'll get a phone call and all of that. That's a lot of work. If your content is good enough, you can probably have some simpler sorts of, like these tiers that I'm doing on mine, you don't get anything special from anything more than a dollar. But showing that there are various levels, there are some audience members that feel like, yeah, I'm not so cheap with a dollar, I can give two dollars. And then the high rollers can go all the way up to five dollars, although there is a make your own donation. Uh, okay. There's like a estimated for donating for the artists. Yeah, making, just making a donation in terms of I value your content and I want to support you, rather than getting something out of it. Most of them are, you pay this, you get something more. But there's plenty that make some amount of money with a simple sort of like, just donate and help. All right, well, it's been a long three months. Thank you for uh, continuing to come back after all of this time. And you've covered a lot of different social networks. And hopefully uh, you're going to apply the things that we talked about. And uh, practice makes perfect. And remember, the, this class will repeat in a few weeks or months or something. And you're welcome to come back and get a little bit more on that. One final thing as we leave, if uh, if you would like, what is useful for, for me is if you uh, give some feedback about the class. I have an account at RateMyProfessor, um, RateMyProfessors.com. And if you do a quick search, RateMyProfessor Victor Campos, um, there's a place for you to give feedback about this class, what you liked, what you didn't, what could be improved, and so forth. And I check out those comments. They're all anonymous. And I check out the comments there to kind of improve the class as time goes on. And if you ever have any time and uh, would like to give some feedback there, that, that would be helpful to me. So uh, thank you for taking the class and hope to see you in a future class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.